Welcome to Take 5, your five-minute inspirational message from Solid Rock Drogheda. I was recently reading the testimony of a guy called Hector Vega. Hector Vega, from Hispanic descent, as you can probably tell, uh, lived in New York, and he was a criminal. He was in and out of prison. He was involved in violent crime, drugs, all, all kinds of terrible stuff. His life was spiral, spiraling out of control and falling apart. And uh, now today, Hector Vega is a pastor. He leads a church in New York, and God has totally transformed his life. But one of the things that turned his life around, according to a recent interview with Christianity Today magazine, was whenever he was in prison and another prisoner with the same surname committed uh, suicide. Hector was, was Hector Vega and the, the prisoner who committed suicide was Jose Vega. But uh, through some kind of administrative mix-up in Riker's prison, uh, prison staff contacted Hector's parents and told them that he had committed suicide. And so his parents thought their son was dead. And it was actually several days until he was able to get a message to them and the whole misunderstanding was corrected. So for several days, they were convinced that their son had died in prison. All of this caused Hector to reflect upon what that must have meant to his parents. And if that report had been true and that had been the end of his life, then what would his life have counted for? Was there really anything that his parents would have given thanks for, for his life, for any meaningful impact that it had had on anybody else? And that was one of the turning points in his life that brought him to faith in Jesus Christ. And today he's serving man and serving God as a pastor. He's not the first person to have his death being uh, misreported in that way. Uh, this actually happened once with my brother. My, my elder brother used to, uh, when he was still at school, uh, had a motorcycle. He, he had, it was a little Honda, I forget if it was a Honda 50 or a Honda 90, but it was one of those little, little Hondas that are a bit more like, a bit like riding a lawnmower, to be honest. Um, but anyway, he sold his bike. He advertised it in the newspaper and a guy rang up and came to the house and bought the motorbike and everything else. And apparently this guy that bought his, the motorcycle off my brother, on his way home, there was an incident and he lost his life. Now, I'm not quite sure if he had a heart attack or whether he was hit by a car, what happened. But, but anyway, he died on the motorcycle on the way home from purchasing the motorcycle from my brother. And the police came, obviously the police found a, a dead body lying there beside a motorcycle. They checked out the ownership of the motorcycle. And of course, my brother's name came up on the records. So they called around at the house and uh, my, my, my stepmother, I think it was, answered the door. It might've been my father. And uh, there was the police. And uh, I, I wanna tell you that when you have to tell somebody that a loved one has died, it's a horrible job. As a pastor, I've, I've had to do it and it really is a, uh, it's a horrible thing to have to do. And so they were dreading the reaction and everything else. And uh, <laughs> she said, no, no, John's not dead. John's upstairs. He, he's doing his homework. John, and he came down the stairs and they realized there was some kind of a mix up or, or a mistake had taken place. You know, the same thing happened to a Swedish inventor, Alfred Nobel. He, he actually was in, he invented dynamite and Alfred Nobel, uh, it was falsely reported in a French newspaper that he had died. And the newspaper said because of dynamite and the impact it had had in explosives and warfare and everything else, the headline announcing his death said, the merchant of death is dead. Of course, he wasn't dead at all. It was a false report. But that headline so shocked him that he said, is that what I'm going to be remembered for? Is that what my life is going to be, that I'm remembered as the merchant of death? And he determined that for the rest of his life, he would do something more positive. He set up the Nobel Prizes, including the Nobel Peace Prize. And today, his name is not remembered so much for the invention of dynamite, but for the prizes that acknowledge scientific prowess, literary prowess, and advancement of peace. I want to tell you today, you might feel that if your life ended today, that perhaps the obituary that would be written for you or what your life would have counted for 
is not what you would want it to be. But there's still time to turn it around. Like Alfred Nobel, you can turn your life around. Like Hector Vega, you can turn your life around. You know, I look, what do I want God to say? What, what do I want people to say about my life when my course on earth is run? Uh, I'm determined that I'm going to lay down a legacy, uh, a legacy of faith, a legacy of obedience, a legacy of blessing. And I pray that God will help you to do the same. May God bless you today in Jesus' name. Join us again tomorrow for another Take 5, your five-minute inspirational message from Solid Rock Drada.